Oh. Well, Spanky, thanks for oh. joining us on the show, man. It's nice oh, no to have problem. you back on the OBDM podcast. I think the last time that you were on the show, it was me, you, and my uh, my brother, Clown Baby, and we were talking about missing 411. And we were trying to explain to you uh, what that was all about, how sometimes when uh, people go missing, they go missing under very peculiar circumstances, especially out in like National Forest or in the woods. And uh, th- this most recent book, uh, called Missing 411 Montana is more of these cases. And for like a brief overview uh, of what a missing 411 case is, uh, it is when someone goes missing in the woods and they are, if their body's found, it's typically found in a place that has already been searched. Or canines that are brought out, they can't, they can't find a scent. Yeah. Uh, when they go, when a person goes missing, they deploy search and rescue. Oftentimes, uh, severe weather just happens to erupt, and the search is impaired or called off for a few days. Then sometimes, um, b- bodies that are found that go missing, they will either have their clothes removed. Oftentimes, their shoes or uh, or boots are removed. Um, and then a lot of times that people are found near water or in water, lake, stream, river, what have you, and sometimes near boulder fields. Those are all just like a brief overview of what a, what constitutes a missing 411 case. And the, uh, the author of this book series, Missing 411, David Plait has put out a new book specifically about Montana. And I've been going through this. I've been reading it for the past few days. Um... And it's kind of depressing to read because you're reading about people that in most instances, like 90% of the cases that he writes about, they're dead. So it's not like a very Christmassy book, you know? Yeah. Uh, You're reading about people that have lost their lives and were uh, probably alone in the final moments of their lives. So, uh, Jingle bingle. Jingle bingle. Uh, this is what we're going to be talking about for, for a, a, l- a little bit today. What is the Jingle Bingle? I don't remember that one. I, I forget. Like, I came up with Jingle Bingle a few years ago as, like, a non-specific holiday greeting. Yeah. You know? It was, it's just a, a Jingle Bingle. Jingle Bingle. I, I forget how I came up with is it. Is that your voice? I'm that is... Sniffle. No, this is... Jingle Bingle. That is Lionel. He's a big YouTuber from Lionel Nation. Uh, okay. This guy... Jingle Bingle is uh, Ethan Van Shriver, who's a big comic book artist. It sounds Jonathan like, sound like the same dude. Jingle Bingle. Jingle Bingle. And Maybe then this third, this third guy. Jingle Bingle, motherfuckers. That is uh, Dab and Mike, Dab Surgeon. He's a, he's a listener. He hopped on the Jingle Bingle bandwagon very early on and sounds called like in and left that, that note. Sounds like it's really sweeping the nation. Uh, it's like a very slow grass fire, you know? It's like a grass fire that is kind of annoying. You could probably go out and like stomp it out if you want to, but it'll just burn out on its own. But you just kind of sit there and kind of watch it like, eh, it's not going anywhere. I can just check this out. We have t-shirts. It fade a little bit. We got uh, Jingle Bingle t-shirts. If you just search for a Teespring OBDM, you can purchase a, a Jingle Bingle t-shirt. It's not too late. You can <laughs> celebrate Jingle Bingle, I think, up through February. Um, really? Yeah, I think so. It's indeterminate. We don't know when all it starts. Way, all the way until Valentine's Day? Pretty much, yeah. Or maybe for Valentine's Day, too. Yeah. It's just kind of all rolls into one. We celebrate, like, three holidays here. Bingle, bingle, kind of Thanksgiving, and then we talk about Halloween. Um, all That's right. Let's, let's get on over, and let's just talk about Missing 411, because this is some interesting stuff. And then, I think... Uh, I don't have much to show here since these are just uh, kind of stories that I've read in the book, and I'll convey them to uh, all you good people out there. Um, the two stories I found in the book that I found most compelling... Oh, wow! There was something that was going on there. Um, one of the, uh, the two stories that I found in the book that was uh, fairly compelling were stories that involved uh, younger kids that were taken by animals and uh, the first one is from 1903 
And these are both these cases are in Montana. Um, this is uh, September 1903, and uh, it was reported that the Dumfrey family uh, said that their infant daughter was carried off by a wolf in the afternoon. Uh, obviously, someone must have ha- had seen a wolf like carry off their infant child. Um, that's what was reported in a newspaper. So they went out looking for their daughter. And uh, the father said he found a wolf den. He entered the wolf den, and he saw a mother wolf <coughs> feeding her pups. And he also, at the same time, saw his daughter trying to suckle from the mama wolf. Uh, he went in there, got his daughter back. Uh, you know, the, the, the wolf growled a little bit, but didn't prevent the father from taking his daughter back. And How long was she gone? Did she just... Like five minutes, and she's already sucking on a wolf tit. Uh, yeah, it's a good wild? question. Um, like you're saying, like there's no loyalty to family there. Yeah, it's just like, oh well, <laughs> I guess I'm a dog now because I'm a wolf now. Just- uh, it the way it was conveyed, it was within 24 hours that uh, the daughter the daughter was found. You figure the kid could go without milk for 24 hours. I know. You're, you know, but a uh, free meal's a free meal, Spanky. <laughs> right. What are you gonna do? I w- you know I would do it. <laughs> I'm, let's well, be honest. Th- this is in one of the instances instances of, of missing four hundred one where the the kid didn't die and was actually uh, retrieved and and lived. But that's how it was reported in a newspaper that a wolf basically abducted the daughter, and it kind of ended there. Found to be curious from nineteen oh three. Uh, the second one in the, the book that I want to touch on is. From 1955, and this involved, and this is July 4th, 1955, and the, the kid who disappeared was Ida Mae Curtis, and her age was two years old, and this was in the uh, Coon Tinney National Forest um, near Libby, Montana. So, this is a... Mike, that's Kootenai, just... Kootenai? Yeah. And what was the other Kootenai? other one? Liberty? Uh, Libby, Montana. Libby, okay. That's yeah, it's like a, a town. Um, so this is, this is at a big logging camp. The father, Mortimer Curtis, was a logger, and all the loggers decided to bring out their families to, to the camp for 4th of July, probably to set up fireworks and just have a, a nice uh, a camp and, and picnic with each other. In the late afternoon, Ida and her brother Cecil were in their tent when they said a bear entered the tent and carried Ida off. Uh, It was stated that Mortimer's father saw a bear in the woods about that time. Now, the the kid Cecil said that his uh, his sister was carried off by the bear, and as it picked up uh, his sister with one arm, it ran off on three legs. That's what the kid said, and... The grandpa, Mortimer, said he did see a bear in the woods at the time. Uh, that provoked the search. Almost 250 people searched for her. Um, then on July 5th, the next day, she was found across the creek, not but 300 yards away from the camp in, in, in an area that had been searched dozens of times. And she was found in a... Uh, a, a sort of a, a, a cedar shelter, uh, something that was almost like a, a cedar lean-to. And she was unharmed, she wasn't wet, and she was in good health, which is all concerning because you'd imagine that if a, a bear did grab her, uh, it's the bear is hunched over, it has to go through a creek, so you'd imagine there'd be some water splashing up. And a bear, uh, in, my, in my recollection, I believe bears do have claws, so there might be some claw marks or some ripped clothing on on the young girl. There wasn't any of that, and uh, like I said, it was already in an area where she it was they already searched. I, th- I think a bear could have a little finesse if it wanted to, you know, and not hurt hurt something with its claws if it wanted to. I suppose so. I guess a bear could be delicate. I'm not sure if bears are known to be delicate. I guess you can train a dog to pick up something with its mouth very gently and not destroy it. <laughs> Um, but I, I don't know if bears are 
I guess they're capable of picking things sure. up, but are they capable capable of picking up a a two year old and running across a creek with it? I don't know. I th- I, think, I don't think their claws are razor sharp. I think they're kind of pretty sharp, and especially with five hundred pounds of force or whatever behind it, and then it can rip your head off. But they're probably just as sharp. They probably you can probably touch it without getting cut. As it's possible. It was cool. Uh, I'm I'm. I'm saying that it is it's it's not uh, impossible. I just think it's unlikely. So they found Ida. She was unharmed, and uh, the family all stuck to their story that a bear carried off their daughter. Uh, but when she was found, the sheriff's uh, department told the media that there was never a bear, <coughs> and uh, kept insisting uh, that fact over and over again, disregarding. The family's claim. I think the family actually got kind of got ir- irritated with the with the sheriff. But in a in a subsequent kind of uh, interview with the kid, Ida said, as she was being carried, she remembered being hit in the face repeatedly by the bear's breasts. Okay, so it was a furry animal, and you it might have been a a sand squanch. I bear. I, I'm not like. Up on bear biology or anatomy, you don't know. But from I don't bears? think they have breasts. They have a, they have a chest breast. You know what I mean? If it's a female Bigfoot or a, I don't think they. I mean, it, what I'm getting at is they attribute like the what they saw as a bear. I think it's probably a Sasquatch at that point. Yeah, if it was a female, it might have a nice, a big set of tits. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, it's not unheard of that uh, there are other stories out there of, of Sasquatch abducting kids or other kids being abducted by whatever kind of creature it is and uh, taking care of it. Um, I, I, I don't know if a bear would build a, a, like a, a cedar lean-to, like a, a cedar shelter for the kid to stay in. It, I mean, it would, it would, I would believe... It would have to be some sort of hairy humanoid or some sort of humanoid in the woods doing this kind of thing. Or it, it might be like I was thinking the one, a really passive bear that can handle things with care and artistic. A, a crafty bear can make a little house, you know, for the baby. Uh, a, a bear with a, a liberal arts major. Something that yeah. a bear is very sensitive, very uh, a hippie, crafty. A hippie bear. Okay. Okay. You know, I mean... I mean, I mean, if the, the bear has that much intelligence to get a degree and go to college and become a hippie, then sure, it probably would abduct a, a small uh, child to to rear on its own. <laughs> it, it might be one of the. It might be like a crazy uh, one of those you know women that abduct children and raise them as their own. Uh that's possible. What that? There's a word for it. Yeah, there is a specific medical condition for a a woman. That uh, abducts a child. That I mean, that's the whole premise of Miss uh, of uh, what, raising Arizona. Yeah, kind of. That's a couple though. Yeah. And then there's a new movie out on Netflix uh, with uh, Sarah Paulson, the woman from American Horror Story, and how she kind of. Uh, well, I just blew the end of the movie, but. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, we move on from that. It's all right. Uh, but um, in a, a non-Montana-related story, um, I'll bring this up on screen. And this is a three-year-old. This is like just from earlier, um, well, I guess it was last year. I'm sorry. Uh, January 2019. We talked about this on the show. And this is three-year-old who was missing for days, says a bear watched over him. In the North Carolina woods. I thought it was Kentucky, but it's North North Carolina woods. So a three-year-old boy was found alive in the woods in eastern North Carolina after he went missing for two days. Uh, He said he spent the time with a bear. Casey uh, Hathaway disappeared last Tuesday. He had been playing with two other children in his grandmother's yard. And when he disappeared, Thursday, Casey was found calling for his mother, about a quarter mile away, 40 to 50 yards deep in the woods. He was soaking, cold, and tangled in a thorn, bu- uh, thorn bush. Uh, Hugh says rescuers waded through nearly waist-deep water to get to the toddler. Um, how did he get there, and how did he stay alive? 
Uh, quote, he hung out with a bear for two days, is what his aunt said. And she shared that in a now private Facebook post. She said it hung out? Hung out with a bear. Oh, right. Uh, his aunt called it a miracle and said God sent him a friend to keep him safe. Casey's mother gave authorities the same report, and he said a f- he had a friend in the woods that was a bear, Sheriff Hughes told USA Today. Sounds Hughes like said the, guy. He said Hughes, uh, Hughes said bears are common in the area, but he thought the comment was more, more cute than factual. This kid was three. Um... Does he remember the bear? I mean, three-year-old kids can talk most of the time and tell you what happened. Uh, yeah, that's... that's. Uh, I, th- I think these kids are just seeing what they are used to seeing. And it could be... It very well could be some sort of Bigfoot. Some sort of a uh, hairy human that is watching over these kids, maybe abducting them. Like, this, this kid was found just... 40 to 50 yards into the woods. And if I remember correctly from the story, it was just 1,500 feet from the house and about uh, 50 feet up on like this, this ledge. Now, that is an area that I would assume w- would have been searched within the three days that the search and rescue had. Just like this, the previous story from Ida, she was found 300 yards from a campsite in, a, in an area that was definitely searched by search and rescue. And she appeared there um, out of the blue. Uh, this kid, uh, you'd imagine he would be crying the entire time, throwing a fit because he's cold, he's scared, he's alone. They would have heard him through, throughout those three days. But they did not. He just, he was there. And the bear was looking after him. Uh, I just think that there's a... There is definitely something to those last two stories. The the wolf carrying off the kid in the first story. Uh, don't know about that. I don't. You don't hear a lot about that. There are other missing four eleven cases and and stories from the late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds of kids encountering strange wolf creatures in the woods, but um, nothing as recent as what I, I just yeah. shared here from two thousand nineteen. If you want to join the Slack or Discord, give us an email at. Our big dumb mouth at gmail.com. Check out obdmpod.com for all the social media and donation links. Be a part of the magic.